thing. So again, tonight it's going to be the DIY SEO audit. My name is Amy. I'm from Creative Allies and one of my partners, Stephanie, is also joining and we'll be going through um, this information tonight. The first thing to share with you is just this quote, you know, Neil Patel is somebody you maybe have heard of, but very, very, uh, very experienced on the SEO side, but also content in general. You probably see a lot of things on social media about him. He has a great website, lots of free tools that you can get, um, but no website can stand without a, without, a, without a strong backbone, and that backbone is technical SEO, and that is super, super important, and I'll just share as a small business owner about maybe two years ago, probably when I first met Stephanie, I had no idea what that meant. You know, technical SEO, it just sounded like something I didn't need to know. It sounded like something that would be over my head because it has the word technical in it and I'm not technical. But over time, I have learned from her and from reading, it's really not as difficult as it sounds. It can be, but there are certain things that you should learn if you take care of your own website if you run a small business so that you can make sure to optimize your site and not have to rely on somebody else to do that for you or worst case to not have it done at all. And so that's what we wanted to share with you today are just very, very basic things that will help you um, audit your own website. The three topics, if you've joined us, you, you are familiar that we try to cover three things for everything we talk about. So the three topics for tonight's session will be about keyword research, meta tags and titles, and then links. And those we felt like are three of the most important things when it comes to an SEO audit. There's much more that goes into that. You know, if you have a professional audit done or you've read about it, you've seen the pricing, there are many more things involved, but these are the things that we felt would be straightforward enough for somewhat beginners to understand and be able to actually tackle themselves and implement. So these are the three things we'll talk about today. The first thing is really how to perform keyword research. Keyword research is so important. It really, it's hard to emphasize how, how important it is and for you to understand as a business owner why it's important. And we've talked about this in a lot of our previous sessions, but most people, when I say most, probably 99.9% .9 of people go to Google to search for everything. So whether it's food, whether it's your hair, whether it's products for your kids, whether it's educational tools, you're going to search Google if you don't know where to go or where to get it. And how you search and what you search for are really those keywords that a business needs to be familiar with. So as a small business owner, I need to know what are the words, what are the phrases that people would use to get to me, to be able to find me, to be able to locate me and my business. And so as a business owner, you know, how do you go about that research? How do you go about finding what, what people are going to search for to look for you? That's part of it. The reason why you do that is so that you know how to take those keywords and apply them into your content. So whether that's your content on your website pages, whether that's your content in your blog on your on your website and so the first part that we're going to talk about tonight is really how to perform that keyword research there's three parts that we want to share with you and then stephanie's going to actually kind of walk through some live examples using google that's your best friend in this situation you know it's it's really funny people <laughs> people always ask questions when they could just ask google i mean it really is that simple it's like why are you asking me? I, you know, <laughs> just ask Google. And so it's a matter of just feeling comfortable that almost anything you need to know or everything you need to know and more is going to be on Google. So make that your friend when you're doing keyword research is to use Google. That's how people will search for you. So that's how you'll find out what they're searching for. The second thing is about making a list. A lot of times people do think if they have the first step, which is I know I need to use Google, they're usually only looking for like two or three words. And you'll hear from Stephanie over and over again, that's not nearly enough. So your keyword list could be 30, 40 words or phrases. It could be a lot and it's something that you need to revisit. It's certainly not something that you would run and create your list and then never look at it again. It's kind of an ongoing living document that you want to keep updated. And then the last thing is about related search terms. So maybe you find certain words, certain phrases 
that work for your business, you also need to understand related search terms. There's a lot of tools that will help with that. There's also ways you can, you can look at that through Google. But understanding these steps, again, they might seem complicated, but they're actually very straightforward of how you perform keyword research. And then obviously, like I said, the next step is what you do with those words once you have your list. So Stephanie's gonna actually take you through really quick examples of how you would go about using using Google. So first of all, I wanna say is that this is not the only tool that you can do use for keyword research. There are websites out there that will also do keyword research for you, which is something that we provide at the end of this webinar, um, some more tools for you. But if you're on a budget, and like Amy and I always say, we like free stuff, um, the best way to do your keyword research is to start with Google. So I'll go through a quick example for you guys. Let's say hypothetically, you are a video production company. So we're gonna type in video production and we're gonna come all the way down to the bottom of the screen. And do you see where it says searches related to video production? That's video production process, types of video production. What are the three stages of video production? Video production services. These are all terms that folks are searching in order to find anything as it relates to video production. Now you may say, well, I'm a video production company. Why would I wanna share the video production process on my website? I want people to contact me. And that's exactly why you wanna share that information. These are also the terms that people are searching. So you want to make sure that you're incorporating those words into your blog um, on your static pages. So as your home page or about us pages, these are all words that needs to be included organically if you want to rank in Google. And if you scroll up just a little bit, let me scroll up for you. Because like I said, Google is your saving grace and it will guide you. You also see this thing that says people also ask. Now, this is not there by accident. Google gets asked a lot of questions all the time. So trust their research whenever they have something that says, what, what are people also asking? So this is saying, what does video production mean? Again, as a video production company, you want to position yourself as a thought leader. So if your target audience is asking, what does video production mean? Make a blog. I mean, it doesn't have to be super long. It can be a paragraph long saying what does video production mean? Literally, that should be the title of your blog. Um, I know so often in this world of clickbait, we want to create these cute and fancy titles, but at the end of the day, no one is searching those cute and fancy titles. They're searching for very specific words, and you want to make sure those words are also used as your titles. Something else you see is what are the three stages of video production? Again, as a video production company, these things may feel like no brainers to you, but in fact, it shouldn't be. These are things that your customer is asking. So you wanna make sure that you continue to be that reliable source for them. And again, this is great because once you are able to post, let's say a blog post about what does video production mean, you can now use that same blog content and post it on Medium, post it on a Facebook, um, a Facebook blog post. You can also post it on LinkedIn and reuse that content because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you're ranking at the top for all things video production and that's how you do it. And so one thing that I do for myself personally is after I go through and identi I identify what the questions are that people are asking, I identify what those search terms are. I make a list of those literally. And then I take some time out when I have a burst of energy to crank out a lot of content. And I literally write blog posts answering every single one of those questions. And I say within about a month of those um, web, web postings being live on your site, I can guarantee you will start to see an uptick in your traffic because it does matter. What is your recommendation on how often people do that for the keyword research? Yeah, so if you've been on our uh, webinars before, you know that I am a, a firm believer in posting content as frequently as possible. I mean, if you can do, you know, five, three to five blog posts a month, I mean a week, I'm sorry, I recommend that. In terms of keyword research, keep doing it. I mean, there is an endless amount of keywords out there. And so the more you do it, the higher you increase your chances of being able to rank. Um, for me um, and one of my companies, I literally do keyword research at least once a month. And in once a month of keyword research, I'm able to gain like 30 blog topic ideas. I'm a writer by trade, so it, it's a lot easier for me to crank out the content. But again, don't overthink it. Just think, put, put your hat on and say, hey, what if someone walked into your office today and asked you these questions? What would be the answer you give them? And answer it in that way. You can answer it in in a friendlier tone, or like you would talk to one of your customers or one of your friends, whatever the case may be, you wanna make sure you're just simply answering the questions. It doesn't have to be a college research paper. Just answer the question as you would as you know any other professional. 
Yeah, that's probably one of the hardest things as a business owner to realize is you don't have to be a professional writer. Stephanie is that, but you don't actually have to be a professional writer to create good content for your customers. Again, it's back to answer the questions they're asking. That's what they're doing on Google. They're asking questions. They're looking for something. And so if the content on your site or your blog answers those questions, they're going to find you. And it's not, they're not grading you or you know, you're not trying to impress them with how well you write. It's really answering the questions. And that's the, one of the hardest things yet easiest things to learn about. <laughs> and, and, Amy, let me also share this hack with you guys as well. Is so after you write, let's say a blog post and you're answering one of those questions that I just showed you, even if it's just a paragraph, at the end of that paragraph, say, if you're interested in learning more, you know, call this number um, to, to reschedule your free consultation create a call to action at the end of that post. So then if they're not clear on your answer, they'll call you, they'll email you. Because at the end of the day, what you want is to be able to convert those people who come to your website into paying customers. And you do that by one, drawing them in, but then once you draw them in, continue to act as a resource to them by putting your information there for them to contact you to gain further information on whatever it is that you posted about. Definitely. Okay, we're going to move to the next topic, which is about um, kind of the back end of your site. Now, I will say this, we typically use WordPress, so this is going to be an example for WordPress. It is similar, but certainly not the same or as in-depth for other, let's say if you use Wix or you use Squarespace. So this example will will focus on, on WordPress. This is really a little bit about when people say technical SEO, kind of the things that they're referring to. So it's the right way to update your meta tags and titles. Well, first of all, what are they? That's you know usually what people would, would ask. So the three things that we wanted to focus on and the three things we feel like are the most important for you to know, meta description, SEO title, and image tags. And these should be universal no matter if you're using WordPress or Wix or anything else. Like I said, there will be things that are different, but those are things that you should know no matter what your platform is. And they are much, much easier to understand than they sound. And then I'm going to talk through each of them and Stephanie will, will do um, kind of a preview. We'll go through the Creative Allies back end and take a look at a page. But basically your better description is just that. It's a description of what that page is. So when people see your page on Google normally, and you'll see this, in, I think we can show this in a minute, but normally under the title of your page, you see this little blurb. It's like one or two sentences. That's really the meta description. And if you look to the right here, the back end of your site is where you would go in and you kind of see, this is just a, a fake page, but you see Creative Allies in the title right here. And then you see these two sentences, which is gibberish slash Google will make up something for you if you don't type something there. But you have an opportunity to type something in there. When you type something in there, you have an opportunity to use the keywords that we just talked about. And so it's describing what information is on that page, but it's also an opportunity for you to optimize that one to two sentences for your website. So it's a very powerful tool that frankly, a lot of people miss. A lot of people don't put anything there. It's free, it's easy to do, and it's something that's going to help you not just drive traffic to your page, but also help people understand what your page is about and what your site is about. So if they happen to see your your name or your company's name come up before they click, they might read that little blurb. And you just never know if it's gibberish, if it's something that looks generic like this one here, they might move on to the next company. But if it has a compelling description and it has something that is enticing for people to click on, then they might click. So the meta description is something very important to make sure that you have, and this is for every page on your on your site. The SEO title is really what would typically be right here. That's another area that uh, allows you to be creative in what you put on there, but also to make sure that you have the correct keywords in there to optimize that title. That's going to be what you see. It's going to look really just like this in Google. So it'll be in the blue and it'll be a lot bigger text. So that's what people are going to see first. If they search for something, let's say video production, like we used in the last example, then they're going to get a page full of results. It's going to be the thing that stands out the most. So you want to make that compelling. You actually have surprisingly a lot of characters to use. A lot of people probably keep it short, but you actually have, I don't know what the number is. If it's like 140 or something like that, but you actually have 
quite a few characters to be able to put almost a full complete sentence <laughs> to talk about who you are and what you do and really entice someone to click on that page and then the third thing uh, you really can't see from this particular image but it's the image tag so when you have images on your site which you should you also have the opportunity to tag them on the back end again most people miss this but this is another way where if somebody is searching for someone or something excuse me and you have your images tagged appropriately so tagged for purpose what that image describes somehow being connected to you know what you offer or your brand those images may actually come up as well so let's say somebody happens to do a google image search instead of a regular google search then you have another opportunity to drive people to your website so all of these things are ways to quote unquote optimize your site which really means you're helping your site be found by the people that you want to find it and that's really the gist of it so the three things again are the meta description which is basically uh, this description here the sentences the seo title is this first part here that's at the top of those sentences and then the image tags which we'll take a look at in a moment so this is actually our about us page so i tried to pick one that was that was green <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, so one thing I will say is whenever you think about Google searches, think about it as speed dating. You have one shot to make a good impression. And so whenever folks are scrolling through Google, as they've searched whatever term they're looking for, they're going to be looking for, like Amy said, that description or that title that pops up. And if I'm just scrolling through, I don't have time to figure out, okay, does this person have the information that I need. I need you to tell me that you have the information. And so that's why those meta descriptions and meta titles are so important. Now, if you're saying, well, I don't know if I have those on my website. If you don't know, then you probably don't have it. Um, because lots of web design companies, they unfortunately do not have um, the capabilities to also do SEO for you, which puts lots of folks in danger um, as it relates to SEO as soon as they launch and they don't even realize it. And so, as you can see, if you come down to where it says multicultural marketing agency, Amy was very specific in naming what she wanted that page to be about. So that page is all things multicultural marketing agency. Below that, you will see a multicultural marketing agency for sports, businesses, and entertainment. So you see, she literally tells you what is on that page. And so what you wanna do is whenever you get off this webinar, go to the back end of your WordPress site and see if each one has a specific title and also a description. Now, if Google has to pull the content for you, the chances of you ranking are very slim to none because generally what Google does is they take bits and pieces of your website, page, bits and pieces off of the pages of your site and they try to incorporate it into the description to create a better user experience, but they're not full complete sentences. And oftentimes it, it doesn't even make sense grammatically. And so you wanna make sure that it's polished whenever you write these descriptions. Again, it doesn't have to be super detailed, but you wanna make sure that you give your customer the opportunity to know exactly what it is that your page has to offer. Another thing that I also recommend within those characters in your description, again, is to put a call to action. So let's say, say hypothetically, I'm in a rush and I don't have time to click on this multicultural marketing agency page, but I know that my boss has told me that I need to have, have found a multicultural marketing agency by eight o'clock today. Then I ask that you just include either your website, not your website, either your email address or your phone number in that description. So then folks can contact you immediately without ever having to visit your page and then they can ask you all the questions. Again, the whole point of SEO, especially for small businesses, is to generate leads and to convert those leads. And so anything that you can possibly do to help better enhance that experience and make things easier for them, the better you are and it puts you in a position to win. Now, if you will go and click on, uh, da, 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 da. click on media, Amy, up to, uh, on the left side, yeah. And then click on library, okay. Scroll down for me. Okay, so stop right there. Okay, so do you see example number one where it says SEO23 up there? Click on that, Amy. Okay, so the title of that blog post where that picture is included is, I think I saw, is 10 main SEO strategies your competitors use. Now, as you will see, this photo is not titled correctly. It's just titled SEO 239, you know, and a whole bunch of other numbers. What you want to make sure that you do is that you tag that as SEO strategies for your, or 
SEO strategies for your competitors. You want to use those same keywords that you use in that blog post within your photo, because if you tag that photo that way, if folks, for whatever reason, go to your image, click on images when they're Google versus just going through all the posts out there, again, you will rank first in Google images. So again, it's about creating the user experience and making sure that you tag things relevantly. Um, I know most times whenever folks, you know, right click, they save a picture, they may just say, I don't know, one, two, three, four dot JPEG. I mean, yeah, that's quick and easy, but at the same time, this is not about quick and easy. This is about producing results. And the only way you can produce results in SEO is to make sure you're very intentional in everything that you're titling on your site. Perfect. So I have some homework to do. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> then the next part is about links. And this is the third thing that we thought was really important for optimization. And so really there's three parts to this, internal links, external links, and broken links. And all three are probably equally important. Maybe the broken links is more important because that is a bad impression. Um, I think if you don't have the other two, people might not notice as much. But with internal links, that's really, and we'll show an example. I have an example pulled up of one of our blogs, but internal links are just other links to different pages in your website. And that is kind of showing Showing the user, yes, but I think probably showing Google is a little bit more important that you have, you're putting out relevant information and then everything else on your site is related. So you're not just kind of, you know, putting out garbage just to put out information. And so if you have, obviously you need to have a kind of a good amount of content to be able to do this, but in every piece of content that you put out, whether it's your pages or your blog articles, you should be able to link to something else relevant on your site. So if you're writing a blog about SEO, for example, then we should have a page on our SEO services on our site that we can link to. If we're writing a blog about a specific sports team and something that's going on there, we should be able to link back to our sports marketing page. And so it's, it really is helpful for you to think about how you're organizing your site, just make sure everything that's included in your site content wise is relevant and related. And then with external links, that's really where you get a little bit more power. Um, domain authority is, is maybe a term that you hear often. And it really just means that, let's say, um, I'll use NC State as an example. We did a project with them. Now, they're not going to have our logo on there, but let's say they did. <laughs> you know, that would be fantastic if they had our logo or our link on their website. That is a huge university. It's a school, so it's a .edu, so it's very trusted in the whole kind of, you know, internet sphere, so to speak. So having somebody like that linked to your site is huge. Most of us would not get that opportunity. So make the best of it that you can, meaning if you have partnerships with people, if you do projects with people, you know, see what kind of relationship you can build where they can have your information, your link or your logo that's linked on their website and vice versa. Perhaps if you do guest blogging, you know, maybe you exchange content that way and you put a blog on someone else's site, but then you link back to your site. But that type of linking, that external linking is very helpful because it shows that not only are you putting out good content, relevant content, but it's also content that's valuable because if it wasn't valuable, this other website wouldn't be linking back to you. So the external links are important too. The broken links are something to just be aware of, and we're going to share in a minute, a, you know, a, a plugin that is really helpful for that, or not a plugin, it's actually a website, I think, that's helpful for that. But broken links are just that, you know, it's kind of um, <laughs> self-explanatory, but if you do have an external link or an internal link in one of your pieces of content, somebody clicks there and they get an error message. So either, particularly if it's external, you know, if somebody has changed their URL structure or they've changed their website or they've gone out of business or something like that, and you happen to have a link to their site on your page, then your user is going to see that being broken. It's really good that you're checking that often because it's a bad, it's a bad impression, a bad user experience for a, a user to be on your site and to click somewhere and then get an error message. So you definitely don't want that to happen. Um, if there's, let's say, a problem internally with your site, let's say you have an internal link in a blog or something like that, and for, for whatever reason you change the name of the page, 
but you forget to go and change that permalink or something like that, then you'll find a broken link there as well. So it's something that can definitely ding you when it comes to your Google ranking. So you wanna make sure to pay attention to that and figure out what kind of tools you can use to kind of stay on top. We, we have a plugin that we use for WordPress. So it sends an alert. So we'll get an email that says, hey, these two links are broken. That way you can go in and kind of fix them immediately. Um, Stephanie has a website that she, that she checks. I think it'll check the entire website um, that, and it's a free tool that you can use. So it's really, really important to make sure you don't have any broken links on your site or when you do have them, you can fix them pretty quickly. Um, and in order to do that, obviously you need to be notified about them. You know, I think it's fairly obvious, but this is just one of the blogs on our website on our Creative Allies website. And we have um, any link kind of highlighted in our branded color. And so you'll see that, you know, small business is mentioned. Well, we have small business marketing page on our site. So it links back to that. Um, we have, let's see, you know, blog posts. I'm not sure that probably just links to our main blog page. Um, we mentioned Bluehost, which is a hosting platform. So then we're linking to that site. Now, granted, they're not gonna link back to us, but that's okay. You know, but we, it's showing that what we're writing about kind of is relevant to frankly, what we're writing about. And it's, we're able to take things that are on our site, but also some things that are external and we're able to include that into, into the blog. I, I think it's good to know is that if, which I'm sure they do, um, whenever you link to let's say Bluehost, Whenever folks are working on their SEO site, they're able to see the Creative Allies linked to them. And then that may put Creative Allies on Bluehost's radar. Um, so if there is like a dream company out there that you would love to you know, partner with or that you would love to work with, try to start including them into your SEO strategy and mentioning them in your blog post. Because again, whenever someone is doing um, internal link research on their website, your site will come up with theirs because they'll see that you mentioned them there. Um, so that's just a kind of a clever way to position yourself next to a brand that you may be interested in working with. Yeah. And I think at first it was a little bit of a challenge to do that, to really think through it. But now that it's just a part of our system, I happen to have a, a small team, but team nonetheless. And so now that everybody is trained, it's like just a part of writing or, or entering the blog. We have a lot of guest bloggers that write for us, but putting that into WordPress and thinking about, okay, what are the other articles that make sense to link to and what are the external links? And so that's just an example, just showing you, um, usually having two or three is usually enough. You don't need to over, you know, overdo it with a bunch of links, but just having a couple just to make it known that you've thought through it really. And you've really thought through how, how the content is related. We have a couple of, you know, just resources that we always like to include at the end. And I'll actually, um, Stephanie, I'll let you talk through these. If you want me to go back to Google, that's fine to show anything, but I'll let you talk through these things. Okay, yes. Yeah. So dead link checker um, goes back to those 404 errors or broken links on your website. So if you go to deadlinkchecker.com, you can literally put in the domain of your website and it will scan your site and literally tell you what pages on your site are broken. And you wanna make sure you correct those immediately. Um, because if you do have broken links on your website, that could cause you to decrease in ranking for any given keyword um, on Google. Now, XML sitemaps is a little bit more complex. It's more so something that needs to be done on the back end of your site. Um, but if you have access to Google Analytics, and if you don't, then you need to make sure that you add Google Analytics to your website there's actually a section in Google Analytics that will allow you to upload a sitemap. Um, and so what it will do is you can click generate and it will generate the sitemap for you um, once you've connected your site to Google Analytics. And then that will cover your sitemap. Again, if this is something you have no idea what I'm talking about, then that means you don't have a sitemap, which also means you're probably not ranking in Google. Um, so you wanna make sure that you get your site connected to Google Analytics and then have them generate that XML sitemap. It takes less than 10 minutes, maybe even five, um, but it's something that you need to do if you want to see rankings in Google. Um, and then lastly, Web CEO is my go-to for all things SEO audit. Um, it is a cost associated with it, but for the purpose of tonight, we wanted to let you guys know that there is a two week free trial. So that means you get 14 days um, with no strings attached to actually do an SEO audit, at least on your website. Now, if you happen to be an agency and you're looking on here, then you cannot do multiple clients on this free trial. 
you can only run one website. And so um, Amy and I kind of laughed because literally it's free, a free tool for you if you use it right in 14 days. So let's say, you know, in these first seven days, you run the SEO audit and you see all the issues. Well, within those seven days, if you go in and correct those issues at day 13 of your free trial, you can rerun the audit and see if those changes you made made a difference. So make sure whenever you do um, subscribe to Web CEO for the free trial, make sure you're prepared immediately to go ahead and run that SEO audit to make sure you're getting the most bang for your buck. Yeah, and I will just say the XML site maps, that's another one where I completely just felt it was so technical and so complicated that I shouldn't even look into it. But after looking into it, it's actually really easy. And there are systems that are free that create it for you. It is literally just a list of every page on your website. And that's it. And so it is one of those things, if you're not sure, that probably means you don't have one and you need one in order to submit that to Google so that you make sure that Google is actually scanning your site um, that will make sure that you can at least be eligible to rank. It might not, you know, make you rank high, but you'll be eligible to rank. And a lot of these things, you know, like I said before, Stephanie is an SEO expert. I am not. And so I was very, um, it was easy to get overwhelmed with a lot of the terminology and everything. And one of the reasons we wanted to do this session is to just show people that it's really not that difficult. If you take a little bit of time and you can get overwhelmed with all of the information that's out there, but we wanted to just share with you some of the really important things. If you take the time to just do a little bit of research, you can actually improve the optimization of your site by yourself. You don't really need to spend a lot of money and you don't, you know, you could maybe get somebody to give you a little bit of support, but you don't really need to pay someone a lot of money because so many of the things you can actually do for yourself, especially if you're a small business and you have a small site. Now, if you have a site that has 50 pages or something like that, maybe that's different. But most people who have small, less than 10 page sites, it really does, it, it can make a huge difference with your rankings and just how clean your site is. And uh, so that's one of the reasons we wanted to do the to, to do this this session. Um, I one thing, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, uh, go ahead. So, <laughs> Again, like we know some of these terms can be overwhelming, but let's say hypothetically, if you have someone who built a site for you, um, just ask them, hey, um, can you help me identify where my XML sitemap is? And you saying that will automatically make them go and submit your XML sitemap for you because they're going to be scared that it's going to appear that they didn't do their job. Mm -hmm. uh, and most times, most web developers are counting on you not knowing extra things. So you don't ask and they don't have more work on their plate. But like Amy said, it's something that can be done quickly. So just ask, even if you don't even know what XML sitemap is, ask them, hey, can you help me generate my XML sitemap? Or how can I see where my XML sitemap is? And they'll go and generate it for you. Um, the same, you know, with meta description and meta, meta title tag, that's something that should be included whenever, included whenever you have a new website created, but nine times out of 10 is not because most people don't know to ask about it. So if you are, you know, hypothetically, you know, in search of someone to build a new website for you, you know, ask that question like, hey, you know, are you guys gonna do SEO titles and um, meta descriptions for me? And either they're going to say yes or no. If they say, I don't know what that is, then you probably need to run away uh, because they're probably not the, the right person for your website anyway. Um, but, you know, just if anything, make sure you're able to ask those questions. Um, and you don't have to know what any of that means. Just know that by you using those terms, folks are going to say, oh, wow, she's an expert at this. So I really need to put my all into this website. So just make sure you're, you're, you write down those terms and be sure to ask any web developer you ever encounter about those things, especially when building a website for your personal brand. Yeah, I like a thousand percent agree. By you just knowing the terminology a little bit, it <laughs> will help you protect yourself from getting taken advantage of or getting screwed from somebody who's just going to say they did something and actually not do it. And so it, that that is really important just to know the terms.